Al-Bara' ibn Azib said that once we attended the janazah of somebody uh, from the Ansar and we followed the grave up until the Qabr and the Qabr had not yet been dug. So all of us sat down with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and somebody began to dig the Qabr. Now that's going to take a while. It's going to take some time. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began speaking. Al-Bara ibn Azib said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked up to the heavens and then he looked down to the earth. He looked up to the heavens, he looked down to the earth and then a third time he looked up to the heavens and then he looked down to the earth. Three times he's looking quietly looking up looking down then he said Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabr oh Allah I seek refuge in you from the adhab of qabr then he began the hadith in the rajul al-muslim idha kana fi iqbal min al-akhira wa inqita' min al-dunya when the muslim is about to enter the next world and leave this dunya the malakul maut comes and sits at his head the Malakul Maut comes and sits at his head. The Malakul Maut, is this a noun or an adjective? Scholars differ. If you say it is a noun, this means there's one angel and his name is Malakul Maut. If you say it is an adjective, then there are millions and millions of Malakul Maut and whoever takes your soul at that time, that is your Malakul Maut. So is there one Malakul Maut or is there, are there many, many Malakul Mauts? Allah knows best, but it seems as indeed there might be one Malakul Maut who's in charge. There's nobody's denying that. But it does appear that every single soul has a specific Malakul Maut assigned to it. Because Allah says in the Quran, Malakul Maut, يتوفاكم Malakul Maut الذي وكل بكم Then the Malakul Maut this is in the Quran that has been assigned to you will take your soul. So Allah is mentioning that Malakul Maut and Malakul Maut is in the Nakir of you know Arabic. Allah is not saying Al Malak or Malakul, no, not Al Malak. Malaku Al Maut, an angel of death. This is how it translates, not the angel of death. So Allah says in the Quran that that the angel, meaning an angel, that has been assigned to you, that angel will end up taking your soul. So it does appear that there are many Malakul Mauts and maybe there is in fact a special Malakul Maut for every human being. And that is not something that is strange because the number of angels is beyond our comprehension. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو No one can count the number of the angels of Allah, the army of Allah, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when the Muslim is about to leave this world and enter the, uh, the, the next world, the Malakul Maut comes and sits at his head. So, it's at the place of the head. Then the, the angels of the heavens come down as if their faces are suns, bright. And they have with them the shrouds of Jannah and the perfumes of Jannah. So, when the person is about to pass away, Allah sends a delegation of angels just for him. Now, even though it is not explicit, our scholars mention that the generality of the texts of the Quran and Sunnah would indicate that this delegation varies from person to person. The one who is muttaqi is not like the one who is on the borderline and just about a good Muslim. Huh? The one who prays the Hajjud and was Abid and Zahid is not like the one who barely just prayed the five salawat and just, just about made it. And just like all deeds, وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا Everyone has a darajah from where they go. So too is the delegation at the time of death. And therefore, the one who is righteous will get a more noble delegation and a more higher ranking delegation and larger delegation. And the one who was middle will get the middle. And the one who was at the very, very end but still on the righteous side because this hadith applies to the first part applies to the righteous the second part applies to the next side so then he will get a lower delegation so angels will come 
and they will have with them the shrouds of Jannah and the perfumes of Jannah and they will sit as far as the eye can see now this would apply to the elite category that they get the best delegation and generally when the hadith mention these types of things, they mention the highest because that's the prize. That's what you want. You want to have that level that as far as the eye can see. Can you imagine you are in a crowd, you are the center of attention and you are surrounded by millions because as far as the eye can see, that's like imagine, you know, like as far as the eye can see is literally we're talking about hundreds of thousands and all of them, they are bringing peace and comfort with their presence their faces are shining bright you can smell the fragrances of jannah you can see all of them they have the kafan for jannah what do you think the impact will be when you see this what do you think the impact will be and that's the whole point we want to get to that level and so they will come down and they will sit as far as the eye can see then the angel of death will say ayyatuha nasul mutma'inna Oh pure and peaceful soul, now is the time to exit. The angel of death has that power that Allah has given him that he can take the soul. And even though he can take it in any manner, he is taking it in such a gentle manner. He is inviting the soul, come, come out now. Now come, you beautiful soul, you pure soul, come out and I welcome you to Allah's maghfirah and Allah's pleasure. So this shows us that at the very, very last millisecond between life and death, the person, even though the monitor is saying his heart is alive, even though he's surrounded by his family, he enters a different realm. Now, from our paradigm, that might be a millisecond. We don't know. From our world, if we look at the watch, it might be something that we cannot even count. But from the perspective of the person about to die, now things go into a different time zone. Because the one who is about to pass away, time and space are different, right? The barzakh is different. They have a different sense of time and space, as we said last time, and everybody understands this. So, that person while they're still alive, they're seeing all of these angels. They aren't dead yet. They see the angel of death. They can still see the angel of death and they're still alive in this dunya. And the angel of death is saying, come pure soul, come beautiful soul, come out and meet Allah's maghfirah, meet Allah's pleasure. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَتَخْرُجُ تَسِيلُ كَمَا تَسِيلُ الْقَطْرَةُ مِنَ السَّقَى so his soul will exit and just go out. The silu, sala yasilu means to flow. This is the, you, you say that, that the, the river the also has sayalan. It's just flowing. The same word is used. So the Prophet ﷺ said, his soul will flow out like water flows out from a jug. If you pour water out, the smoothness, and by the way, the metaphor is also comfort because when you see water, all human beings, it's a sign of peace, a sign of calmness. And the metaphor that our Prophet gave is a metaphor of calmness. His soul will exit the body like water when it is poured from a jug. So that beautiful, just symmetric coming out, this is how the soul will exit and it will then reach the uh, angel of death and the angels around it. and. The Prophet Sallallahu said, they will not allow the soul even one second to be unattended. They will take it up to the heavens immediately. In other words, the soul will not be left alone. The soul will not feel empty or naked, naked or anything. No, the angels will come and they will shroud the soul. They will put perfume on the soul. So interesting by the way, the body, we shroud it, but the soul, the angels shroud it. The body, we take care of it. That's our job. That's fard kifaya on us. If the family is there, they do it. If not, then the community will do it. We have to take care of the body that's left behind. But the soul that's going forward, 
That is the responsibility of the angels. And the angels will wrap it in the delicate cloths of Jannah. And they will put the perfumes of Jannah on it. And every time they were going up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will pass by other angels. And the angels will say, who is this beautiful soul? And the angels will respond, this person is Fulan ibn Fulan. And they'll mention him by the best names that the people of earth remembered him by. Anybody who said, oh, you're an honest person, the angels will say, this is Fulan ibn Fulan, the honest person. Somebody would have said, you're so generous to us. So then uh, the angels will say, so and so, the son of so and so, the generous one. So all of the adjectives that were used on earth in a positive manner, which means what must we do in this dunya, brothers and sisters? Do khair, do good. We want the angels to use those adjectives, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said, the Ahsan al Asma, the best descriptions that the people gave of him, the angels will give as they're going upwards. And this also shows us another fact that we all know, and that is that the heavens are chock full or jam packed of angels. This is something we know that everywhere there are angels. So when the angel is taking that one soul, they'll pass by other souls, sorry, other angels, and those angels don't know who this soul is, so they'll say, who is this? And they will recognize this soul to be a beautiful soul. How so? Because of the angels of mercy, and the angels that have the, the perfume of Jannah, and the kafan of Jannah. So the other angels will recognize, oh, this is a good person. So they'll say, who is this good person? Nafs tayyibah who is this pure person? And so the entourage will say this is so and so the son of so and so and then they will mention him with all of the beautiful names that he was mentioned with in this world now once again remember all of us will go through that we will all be terrified at that stage I mean this is human nature if you do anything that is new you will be terrified how about if you're exiting this world we will be terrified what is all happening now calmness calm you are being comforted that not only the angel that have taken you, but every angel you go by, every group that you go by, they're smiling, they're radiant, they're encouraging you. And this is the reward of the righteous life lived in this dunya. The one who lived righteously, now they begin to taste the fruits of that righteousness. So they are going up and still... I mean, obviously, there's still a matter of, of panic and whatnot. They're going up and up and up. And every time they go, the angels comfort the soul and mention him with good, with good uh, names. And then they reach the highest heavens. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, when they get to the highest heavens, فُتِّحَتْ لَهُ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ the, the doors of the heavens are opened up for him. And so again, imagine the VVIP status. He is the entourage. He is the person wherever he goes, the doors open up. He's being ushered in with the entourage. How do you think this person is going to feel now? More and more, the calmness is uh, setting in. And they go higher and higher until they say that they get to the highest heavens, the seventh heaven. So throughout all of these seven heavens, now what are the seven heavens? That's a whole different topic. If you listen to my Sira lectures, when I talked, spoke about the Isra and Mi'raj, you go back to the YouTube videos, the first or the second lecture of Isra and Mi'raj, I went over 30, 40 minutes about the cosmology of the Quran. Okay, there's a whole different lecture here. We cannot do it right now. What are the seven heavens? What are the seven samawat? What are they? That's a whole different topic. I have done it and you'll find it on YouTube. Right now we go, now the Prophet is saying, they go through every heaven and throughout all of these heavens, the angels are going to be comforting until finally they reach the seven heavens. Then it will be said, اُكْتُبُوا كِتَابَهُ فِي الْعِلِّيِّينَ It will be said. Who will say this? In other reports, Allah will say. So Allah will say, write his name in the register of Illiyin. And Illiyin is the name of a register for the righteous people. It is mentioned in the Quran. And it means the highest register from Ulu, from the high. Illiyin, it is the high leg leg uh, um, registration. That is where the highest book is written for the righteous people. So Allah Azza wa Jal will announce and everyone will hear, write the name of my servant in Illiyin. And then Allah will say, Arji'u, irji'u abdi ilal ard. Return my servant to this world. 
because I created them from it and I shall return them to it and then I shall bring them back from it one other time. And so his ruh will be returned to his jasad. Now, pause here. What does this show? This whole journey was the ruh only. The ruh is going up. And the ruh is now getting the first taste of the akhirah. And it is going up to the first decree. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I quoted the hadith in the last class and we'll quote it again and again. Al-Qabru awwalu manazilin min manazil al-akhirah. The Qabr is the first station out of the many stations of the Akhirah. So this is the first station. And we get the mini hisab before the big hisab. The mini hisabs will begin right from death. From the angel of death, we know which way we're heading. From the angel of death, from the entourage, from what happens, all of it we will start knowing where we're heading from that point in time. And so Allah will say, return his soul back to this earth. This shows us that the common myth that other religions have, that the soul is in heaven, this is not correct. The souls are not in heaven. Allahumma accept, we will come to the one exception is the shuhada, we'll talk about them in another in a later lecture, but that's the one exception. Their souls are up there. But the rest of mankind, their souls come back down to this earth. And then their souls reunite with their bodies. Now obviously, the reuniting with the body, it is not the reuniting of this world, nor is it the reuniting of the akhirah. It is a completely different reuniting which we do not know and we don't have any details of and we will not even understand. Even if words existed, we wouldn't understand it. It's beyond our ilm, complete ilm al ghayb But the soul is where the body is located. Now, if there is no body, Allah knows where the soul goes, but it will still be somewhere. Even if there is no body, the soul, the body must have decomposed somewhere. Right? I mean, you have to, something happens, whether a drowning or a burning or something happens, and the remnants of the body are going to be somewhere. So, in all likelihood, the soul will be in that location in the Alimul Barzakh, not necessarily in our dunya, because again, in that, uh, realistically, then every spot on this earth is going to have a soul in it. By the time since we have come here, there must have been millions of people living everywhere. You understand? You will be walking over everything. This is in a different three dimension, not our three dimensions. In a different dimension, not in our three dimensions. But the soul goes back, and Allah says in this hadith Qudsi, this, this phrase is hadith Qudsi, return his soul to his body. So it will then go back to this body. Then two angels will come. So, going up, coming back down. Then, two angels will come and they will ask him the questions. This is Munkar and Nakir. The names do not occur in this hadith, but in other hadith they occur. And they ask him, Mar Rabbuk? He says, Allah. They say, Ma Dinuk? He says, Islam. They say, who was this man that was sent amongst you? And when they say this man, then the person will automatically understand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will say, Rasulullah. He is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he says this, so they will say to him, how do you know all of these answers? وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ He will say, قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَآمَنْتُ بِهِ وَصَدَّقْتُ I read the book of Allah, I believed in it, and I affirmed it to be true. Then a voice will call from the heavens, Ansaddaq, he has spoken the truth. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَرَوْهُ مَنْزِلَهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ So once again, Allah will decree. This is a second decree after the first decree. That write his name in Illiyin. Now he will come back down, passes Munkar and Nakir, passes all of the questions. And by the way, as our scholars mention, as our scholars mention, the passing of Munkar and Nakir is not intellectual knowledge. It is the knowledge of the Qalb. It is the knowledge you lived. It is the knowledge of your life. It's not the knowledge of the intellect because even a kafir at that stage will know my God is Allah, my religion should have been Islam. No, you cannot cheat on this exam. This is not an exam where 
you can be fed the answers which is why unfortunately some Muslims are falling into strange practices they stand outside the grave and they wait they time themselves three minutes they say ha ah, the angels coming respond your Lord is Allah they wait another three minutes they say ah, okay the angels coming respond subhanallah firstly I mean again where does one begin this is I don't like being harsh but wallahi this is this is backwardness this is not from Islam we do not stand at the, at the outside the Qabr and then spoon feed the answers Wallahi if you did this in this world you would get expelled your son would get expelled from the examination hall you think that that exam is gonna pass it I mean seriously you know like it doesn't work that way this is not from Islam this is mythology that has nothing to do with our religion I don't like being harsh but sometimes there, there are red lines this is one of those red lines don't make our religion look foolish where you stand outside you think you're spoon feeding you know the the answers to somebody in the grave subhanallah no you can do nothing at this stage that's his actions and what he has done and his or her lifestyle so then the statement will come Allah will say he has spoken the truth. So, give him the clothes of Jannah. And give him the couches of Jannah. And show him his place in Jannah. So, at this stage, there's no food, there's no drink. Because it is barzakh. But there is comfort of the barzakh. What is the comfort of the barzakh? The ambience. So, in the barzakh, Nobody eats and drinks. There's nothing there to eat and drink. You cannot eat and drink. It's a barzakh stage. That will happen in Jannah or A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah in Jahannam. And that happened in this dunya. As for the barzakh, it's just the ambience of the soul. That's all there is. That is the na'im or the adab. What is the surroundings of the soul? So in this hadith we learn, give him the cushions of Jannah. Okay, the cushion. Okay, that's the soul is there. And give him the libas of Jannah. Okay, you put something on the soul. And show him his house in Jannah. So, the person will have his grave made vast. His grave is loud, as, as, loud, loud, as large as he can see. Mudd al-basar means as far as the eye can see. And a portal will open up. And that portal will be facing his house in Jannah. And he will see his house in Jannah. And he will smell the fragrance of Jannah. And he will hear the sounds of Jannah. And so he will say, O oh Allah, hasten judgment day. Make it quick so that I can enter this house. So that I can enter this house. So this is the case of the one who passes the test. And as he's waiting there, a very handsome entity comes that is bright, that is wearing good garments, that has good clothes. And that entity will say, I've come to give you glad tidings. Rejoice and be happy for this is the day you were promised. The man will say, and who are you? For by Allah, you are nothing but good. Your presence is good. Your face is good. You are bringing good news. And so he will say, I am your good deeds coming back to you. So your good deeds will take on a form that will bring you happiness, will give companionship to you in the grave. You will feel an actual entity that's calming you down, making you happy. So your good deeds will become an actual comfort for you in the Qabr. And that person will then uh, continue to make dua to Allah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is what Allah says in the Quran. So this is the tafsir of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to the Quran. That's the highest level of tafsir. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says something, that is a different category of tafsir. That is a tafsir with the sunnah, which is an infallible divine category. And that takes the highest category of tafsir. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, read if you want. Then he quoted the famous verse, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ Allah thabbata means to make firm. Allah comforts and makes firm. You thabbit, thabbata. Allah gives thabbat to the people who believe. With what? thabbit. With the firm statement in this world and in the next world. What is al qawl al thabbit? Our scholars said, al qawl al thabbit is in this world. You say, La ilaha illallah at the time of death. 
May Allah make our last kalima to be La ilaha illallah at the time of death. And in the next world, when Munkar and Nakir come, you answer these questions. Who gives you the confidence to answer when you've just been returned to the qabr? Who gives you that confidence? يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah gives you that confidence. Allah gives you that confidence.